Hey guys, in today's video we're going to talk about my winter protection for fig trees this winter time. Uh, we're not going to be wrapping them. We're going to be using this product that I want to show you all called Wilt Proof. And what this will do is it's an anti-transparent. So it's going to keep the moisture in the bark, in the wood for as long as humanly possible. I have a friend in Staten Island, New York, who for years was successful at growing fig trees with, he didn't lose a single one using this product. Every year after the trees had gone dormant, he would spray them three times, three different coats of wilt proof. And every year he wouldn't lose a single tree. In fact, there'd be very little dieback, if any. And what that tells me because he lives in a similar climate to myself here in Pennsylvania, is that it's not necessarily the cold that's killing our fig trees, it is the wind. And I think um, wrapping them certainly gives them a lot of uh, insulation factor. But, you know, I think a lot of that is actually a huge amount of protection from wind and desiccation. It certainly helps keep the moisture within these trees. Very recently, we had a 13 degree Fahrenheit low, a freakishly low temperature on Thanksgiving day, uh, Thanksgiving night, which should have never happened, but it did. And these trees seem to be okay, but they're certainly not as pristine as they were a week ago. Um, I think what had happened was these trees, when I came out here, these trees, if you've noticed them in the wintertime ever, if you've ever been outside, they'll go through a constriction process. They will, the bark will constrict like any other tree. A lot of the wood, even if it's like an apricot or an apple or a peach or a plum, you know, those are more hardy trees, but most trees will constrict. And that's a nice little defense mechanism that they do to help them get through that cold. Fig trees certainly do this more than any other tree I've seen. And then what happens when the temperatures warm up, because today it's quite warm. We're 55 degrees out now, from 13 degrees to 55. Um, so now things have warmed up and things have thawed. And instead of these branches being constricted, they have now expanded back to their original form. Every time that happens, that freeze, thaw cycle is what it's called in scientific literature when that happens you lose some moisture in the branches in the tree um, some moisture is excreted as excess just by the the way that it all works out scientifically I'm not going to go into that because I'm not a scientist but um, that's the process and if we're losing moisture every time that happens I wonder how many times it happens in winter time I wonder how many times it happens in the spring, in the fall. You know, now that it was 13, now it's 55, that's certainly one freeze-thaw cycle that just occurred. At what temperature does it take for these things to constrict? At what temperature does it take for these things to thaw? I really don't have the answers. But the best thing I can do to prevent that moisture loss, that constant moisture loss every year is to spray this stuff here, this wilt proof. Because um, I firmly believe it's not necessarily the cold, but instead the wind, desiccation, or moisture loss that is killing my trees. Um, last year we got down to zero degrees Fahrenheit, and I was out here on every low morning. Every, every morning after we had a really extreme low, I would come out here, I would check all my trees, and I would think, oh, is there any damage? I would, I would inspect them. I would be very careful. And they were seemed fine for even weeks, a month, after we had hit zero degrees Fahrenheit. I think you guys can even go back and perhaps view a video of me doing that. But it's not until like March or April that these trees really look sad. And you would think, wow, these trees got through the whole winter. They, they survived zero degrees Fahrenheit. What happened? Well, in March and April, 
things are not very cold. Things do not get really below 20 degrees Fahrenheit here in March and April. So why are these trees having such a problem? Well, I think because in the fall and the spring, there is freeze-thaw cycles that happen much more often than they do in the wintertime. So that's really my big lesson today is if you can't plant them in a more protected area, you know, all these rocks and all these different things that I've talked about in previous videos, whether it's planting them against a wall or, you know, providing them some protection from the wind, you know, all these things are going to help prevent those freeze-thaw cycles, right? Um, things are going to stay cooler in the wintertime. Things are going to stay warmer right now in the fall and the spring, you know? So we're probably not going to get to those freeze cycles as often, but by protecting them from the wind, I'm sorry, but another suggestion I want to make is that by protecting them from um, the sun, actually is going to keep these things cooler so what another suggestion the thing i was brainstorming um this summertime because i was thinking about winter protection as i was planting these guys out what is it that i'm going to do to protect these besides you know will at the time wilt proof i had no idea about it uh something had came up and i thought to myself what is this paint there's a nursery a fedco nursery uses this uh, whitewash paint and they paint the bark of their trees, the trunks, all of the wood, they paint it white. They don't use an oil-based paint. You have to follow their strict instructions, their strict formula, but it's being shown to prevent board, excuse me, borer damage and rodent damage from eating around the bark. Um, but it also, because it's white and the bark is white, it doesn't necessarily warm up as quick so things are getting they're staying cooler longer on these trees and these freeze thaw cycles don't necessarily happen as often i think the paint also probably would keep some of that moisture in um isn't it strange that most people think that fig trees will not really do well on the ground here unless they're three to four years old why is that? Is it because of the thickness of the wood? Is that why people are saying that? Or is it because of the color of the wood? Because if you notice here on the fig tree, this is one-year-old wood. This is brown. Brown, one-year-old wood. As soon as, the, as soon as the tree ages a bit and gets thicker, older wood, about two to three years old, it turns gray. It turns white. And I think that is a big part of helping these trees get through the winter time is getting a tree in the ground that's a bit older. And perhaps if it's not as 